The coordinate values of the vertices of triangle KLM are integers. Which set of coordinate pairs could represent the vertices of a triangle congruent to triangle KLM? Okay, in our original here, point K is at 1 and 1, point L is at 5 and 4, point M is at 5 and 1. Now, all I did was I just made another copy of that diagram, and then I rotated it 90 degrees to the left. So if we look now, just rotating it 90 degrees to the left, point K is at negative 1, 1, point L is at negative 4, 5, point M is at negative 1, 5. Let's look at our answer choices. Choice C matches because it said which set of coordinate pairs. So you basically neither either need to rotate or dilate or flip or whatever to see what happens. In this particular case, just rotating the diagram 90 degrees left, we got our coordinates. C is our choice. Let's head on. Directions, click on the correct answers. Okay, given triangle ABC and triangle QRS. Okay, ABC, QRS. All right, select two relationships that would prove triangle ABC is similar to triangle QRS by the side angle side similarity theorem. Of course, with the side angle side similarity theorem, you have to prove this side con similar to this side, this angle congruent to that angle, this side similar to this side. Okay, so that means AB uh, similar to QR. Well, here, these two, AB is similar to QR. Both of these match so far, but then AC has to be similar to QS, and that's where this one's knocked out the box. So AB and QR, AC and QS. So we highlight this one, then we have to prove angle A is congruent to angle Q. And look right there, angle A congruent to angle Q because it's the angle between the two lines. So there's your side, there's your angle, there's your other side, sine angle, angle side. Boom, there you go. Let's move on. Okay, the diagonals of a square measure 14 centimeters. What's the length of a side of the square? Okay, so we have a square and it says the diagonal is 14 centimeters. So half of that is going to be a right triangle, and we know it's going to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle, one of those special right triangles. Now measurements in a 45, 45, 90 special right triangle, the sides are x, and the diagonal is always x times radical 2, whatever this number is times radical 2. In this case, we're told the diagonal is 14. So 14 equals the x radical 2. So we just need to find out what the x is. So if I set 14 equal to x radical 2, to get the x by itself, I can divide both sides by radical 2, and then that would give me 14 over radical 2 equals x, but it can't stop there because you could never leave radicals in your denominator. So then what I would do is multiply the numerator and denominator by radical 2 over radical 2. Now in the denominator, radical 2 times radical 2 is just 2, and radical 2 times 14 is just 14 radical 2. Well, look here, numerator and denominator, 14 and 2 have 2 in common. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 14 7 times, so 7 radical 2 equals our x, which is choice A. Okay, if you remember your special right triangle uh, relations right here, this is an easy question to answer. Okay, let's move on. What values for X and Y make triangle MNO congruent to triangle PRT? So here is the original two triangles. All I did with this triangle was just rotate it and turn it up and sat it right next to this one. Again, this right here is the original question. All I did was copy this triangle, turn it up, put it here to illustrate a point. Here we see 24 lines up with the 3X minus 9. Here we see 3y lines up with the 82 minus 8. You see the triangles are congruent, right? So here, 3x minus 9 equals 24. Add 9 to both sides, 3x is 33. Divide by 3, both sides, x is 11. Then here, these angles, 3y equals 82.8. If I divide by 3 both sides, y is 27.6. x is 11, y is 27.6. Choice B. Boom, there you go. That's an easy way to do it. So just imagine you just turning it just to make them line up, and this is easy to answer. Okay. Question 20. 
Based on the given information, which figure contains a pair of similar triangles? Given AB intersects CD. So AB intersects CD. Well, it's already indicated that angle D and angle C are congruent, but then the excuse me, these two angles are congruent because they're vertical angles. So I have these angles congruent and these angles congruent. So that's two angles. So angle, angle. So these two triangles are similar by the angle angle similarity which is if two angles in one triangle are similar to two angles in another triangle then the triangles are similar choice a we don't need to even go any further choice a that's it let's move on all right a right triangle is shown and we're given measurements for this side 7.8 and that side 8 well, since the right triangle, the right angle is here, we know that the side opposite the right angle is our hypotenuse. And here's our x. Well, which angle measure is closest to the value of x? Well, this is the adjacent side of x. This is the opposite side of x. And in right triangles, we use SOHCAHTOA. And the TOA part stands for tangent equals opposite over adjacent. We have opposite measure, we have adjacent measure. So the tangent, negative one second tangent, so as we want an angle measure, equals our opposite of eight over our adjacent of 7.8. And plug it in on calculator, tang second tangent, eight over 7.8, 45.7 degrees, choice C. Okay, wow, I think they're getting easier. How about you? All right, let's go on. Pine Street, Rector Street, and Taylor Street intersect to form a triangular-shaped park as shown. Okay. Pine, Rector, Taylor. Okay. What is the correct order of the lengths of the streets from longest to shortest? Now, if you remember from triangle inequalities, in a triangle, the longest side is always opposite the largest interior angle, and the shortest side is always opposite the smallest interior angle. With that being said, the largest angle is 64 degrees, so opposite that is Rector Street, so Rector is the longest street. Next largest angle is 62 degrees, opposite that is Pine Street, and then the smallest angle is 54 degrees, Taylor. So Rector, Pine, Taylor from longest to shortest. Rector, Pine, Taylor, choice C. Boom, there you go. All right, let's move on. Let's see. The diagram shows the locations of Noah and Ben after swimming in different directions from a dock. Let D be the distance from Noah and Ben in yards. Okay, here's the dock. There's Noah. There's Ben. That's the distance between the two. Okay, which represents all the possible values in yards of the distance between Noah and Ben? Now, you remember with triangles, tri triangle inequality theorem states that any side of a triangle is always shorter than the sum of the other two sides. So then that means that this side, D, has got to be shorter than these two sides together, 84 and 63. And that adds to 147. So it has to be shorter than 147. And... It also has to be larger than these two sides together. So 60 plus, 63 plus this distance has to be greater than 84. And the distance between these two is 21, so it has to be greater than 21. So the distance D has to be greater than 21 and less than 147. Choice C. That's our answer. All right, let's move on. Directions, click and drag the answers to the correct boxes. Select the measures that could be the three sides of a right triangle. So when we're dealing with right triangles, we're dealing with Pythagorean triples. And I've listed a few of the more popular Pythagorean triples here. And you see 20, 21, 29 fits right in here. Now, if you aren't familiar with Pythagorean triples, then you'd have to sit here and plug in each one and see which one fits. It's I suggest it's more convenient to learn a few. You don't have to learn them all, but learn a few of these more popular Pythagorean triples because you may see a question like this on the SOL. And don't spend all day trying to do the A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Just memorize some Pythagorean triples and be on your way. All right, let's move on. Given 
triangle LMN and triangle PQR are isosceles. Okay, so these are isosceles. Okay, so that means the angles here, they're going to be congruent. What measure of P could be used to prove the triangle's congruent? All right, fair enough. So they're both isosceles, which means the base angles are going to be congruent. And then these here, I'm going to set these two equal to each other. 2x minus 26 equals x plus 16. Add 26 to both sides to track x, and x is 42. So we know what the x is. Now, if I plug in x here, 42 plus 16 is 58. Now, every triangle is 180 degrees, right? So 180 minus 58, that leaves 122 degrees between these two. All I need to do is divide that by 2. 61. That's 61. That's 61. That's 58. That's 61. That's 61. That's 58. C. 61 degrees. Okay, let's keep the party going. Directions, click and drag the answers to the correct boxes. Given triangle RST, RS is 14 inches, ST is 10 inches, TR is 16 inches. I went ahead and drew a diagram and labeled it over here for effect. Okay? List the interior angles of triangle RST in order from smallest to largest. And just like I mentioned previously, in a triangle, the longest side is always opposite the largest interior angle, and the shortest side is always opposite the smallest. So, the smallest is 10. That's opposite angle R. So, angle R is the smallest. 14 is the next smallest. That's across from T. So, T would go here. 16 is the largest and that's S, it will go here. So you would drag the R to the smallest, you would drag the T in the middle, and you would drag the S to the largest, and then you're done. On to the next question. Okay, triangle LMN is similar to triangle PQR. Which of the following side lengths could be those of triangle LMN? Okay, so PQR, we see it's in a three, four, five ratio. So I want to look for anything that looks similar or complements the 3, 4, 5 ratio. And out of these four choices, choice D complements that. Because if you look at choice D, 9, 12, and 15, well, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15. It's a ratio of 3. That one was pretty easy. All right. Let's go on to the next question. Okay, a right triangle is shown. What is the closest to the value of x? Okay, here's x, right triangle. We have angle of 22 degrees. So we have opposite that angle, and we have the hypotenuse, because remember, this is the right angle. Hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So opposite and hypotenuse, that would be sine, because sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 22 degrees equals our opposite x over our hypotenuse of 15. To get the x by itself, I would multiply by 15 on both sides, so it's going to be 15 times sine of 22. Sine of 22 on the calculator is 0.3746. So 15 times 0.3746 is 5.6. Answer choice D. Boom. Simple enough. All right. Let's go on to the next question. A convex polygon has only the vertices A, B, C, D, and E. What is the sum of the measures of the interior angles of this polygon? Well, we remember the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a polygon, the formula is n minus 2 times 180. It says it has vertices A, B, C, D, and E. So that's five vertices. So that's going to be five sides. So plug in five for the n. Five minus 2 times 180. Five minus 2 is 3. 3 times 180 is 540. Sum of the measures of the interior angles, 540 degrees. Okay, let's move on. Rectangle JKLM is shown. What's the value of X? All right, so again, half of the rectangle is going to be that right angle, or right triangle, I should say. We know this is 90 degrees, even though it's not indicated here, but we're going to go with that, that this is 90 degrees. So the whole triangle is 180. So 90 plus... And plus, we know it's uh, 90 degrees, because even though it's not indicated, it says rectangle. And a rectangle has four 90-degree angles, okay? So 90 degrees 
plus 62 degrees plus 2x plus 4 equals 180, which is what I did here. 180 equals 90 plus the 62 plus the 2x plus 4. Combine like terms. 180 equals 152 plus 2x plus 4. If I subtract 152 on both sides, I get 28 equals 2x plus 4. Okay? I subtract 4 on both sides. 24 is 2x. I divide by 2. X is 12. Answer choice A. Boom. Are these questions getting easier, or is it just me? I don't know. I'm tripping. Anyway, on to the next question. Chords WP and KZ intersect at point L in the circle shown. Okay, right there. Chord KZ, WP intersecting point L. What is the length of KZ? Okay, so you remember, you should remember from your study of circles that if two chords intersect inside a circle, then the product of the segment lengths of one chord is equal to the product of the segment lengths of another chord. Or basically what this is saying is, since we have two chords intersecting inside the circle, 2 times 3x minus 2 is equal to 5 times x. That's what it's saying which is what I set up here. 2 times 3x minus 2 equals 5x. Distribute to 2, 6x minus 4 equals 5x. Subtract 6x on both sides, negative 4 equals negative x. So 4 is x. So we know x is 4. Now it's asking for the length of kz. Well, kl is 2. And then lz is going to be 3 times 4 minus 2. So 2 plus 3x minus 2, substitute the 4 in for the x. 2 plus 3 times 4 minus 2, which is 2, plus 12 minus 2. The 2's get 12. Answer choice D. Okay, again, your study of circles should remind you of how to answer this question. On to the next one. 